Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So I wanted to do this video in regards to talking about abrupt changes and how it is a sign of spiritual awakening and ascension. So in the world today, we are definitely transitioning more into a logical society. And so you kind of see this, uh, you know, two end of the spectrums kind of growing where people are becoming more logical, kind of science, fact-based, um, a little more analytical and rational. And you see this other part of society where like people are going through some form of spiritual awakening. It doesn't necessarily always mean like a religious awakening, but at least an awakening within themselves. So um, with this type of, of video, I have gone through some very, very abrupt changes in my life. And sometimes I understand these changes more from a spiritual point of view or I under, yeah, I understand it better from a spiritual point of view as compared to the logical point of view. Um, I went through two major shifts and changes last week where I lost um, employment from two places. Now, logically, it's very hard to understand, but spiritually, I very much understand it. So when you do go through something like an abrupt change, um, like losing a job, getting contracts cut, getting fired, things like that, um, one, it is a wake-up call, so you have to do some form of self-actualization to see, like, okay, was my performance not good? Were my energy levels low? Um, you know, this, that, and the other. So, so abrupt changes like that are, are definitely a wake-up call. Um, but on another level, there is a form of space that is being made in your life for something that is more in alignment with you. So sometimes on a deep subconscious level, we are really not happy at certain places or we just don't invest as much energy into, say, like a certain employer and things like that. Um, whether you don't like their vision or maybe there are just certain things like, um, you know, the, the pay is low to where it's like your self value is starting to rise. And so it gets a little harder to invest in jobs and things like that, um, that are a little bit more, uh, that are not in alignment with what your self worth and value are. Um, to some degree too, if they're like toxic work environments and things like that, like your soul is trying to ascend to push you into something else. Now that unknown piece is very scary because you don't know what the future holds and you hope that as you go and progress through life that things continue to get better. Um, the only other time I've ever lost employment was when I worked for the government and it was a very miserable two years and the irony is that during that time I had two mentors um, that I hired. One was uh, a person that I mentored with in the fitness industry. He was really well known. He was a very logical, rational human being, so he gave me a lot of advice on how to like further advance my career and kind of become that infopreneur, which is like an entrepreneur of um, sharing information. And then I had a lady um, who was more of my kind of like spiritual advisor. She was my massage therapist, and it turned into me studying Reiki underneath her um, and learning a lot about the spiritual realm. And the irony is that both these people had the exact same birth date. It was November 7th, I believe of 1970 or 1971. And I was really struggling at the government and they were, you know, the government was really, uh, they, they wanted to get rid of me. And so it was, it basically got to a point of forced resignation. But the funny part of it is that the forced resignation happened um, on November 7th. So to some degree, there was like this symbolic spiritual uh, interconnection that I was headed into a better path, that I was leaving this toxic and very unhealthy work environment to move on to something that was more in alignment with my soul's growth and mission in life. Um, a couple other examples that I have is like I was in Germany and I came back like thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have a family. Like there was this pivotal realization that yes, I can have a kid and I can sacrifice the traveling. And then, you know, within 48 hours, my ex-husband pulled the rug out from underneath me and said, um, I, I would like to get a divorce. And I remember in that moment of having like a psychic vision of my hand holding a diploma in the air and there's like graduation hats flying into the air and a voice inside of me was saying, C 
congratulations, you did it, you've learned your lesson, it's time to move on. So that was a really powerful shift to where logically it made no sense because he and I did so much together. Um, we wrote, you know, we met in grad school, we, we co-authored articles together, we lived in Europe together. It didn't make sense, but on a spiritual level, it completely made sense that that soul tie or that soul contract met its end course. I remember another time many years ago, this was when I was married, um, we had a friend, um, she was German, he was uh, a Dutch, and she got a job at Amazon, and once she got a job at Amazon, she just became very egotistical. Um, I do understand it now from like living in Germany, how, how German the German mind works. And she just became super obsessed over money. She became a little more lustful. She was sleeping around with a lot of people, um, even though her, her ex-husband were, you know, kind of like separating at this point. She was just doing a lot of things like drinking a lot. She was smoking a lot of pot. And she was a really good friend of mine. She was probably my closest friend, but to some degree, she and I just weren't in alignment. And I remember she didn't text me back about meeting up to go to this bar. And I was like, this is so weird because she always messages back. And then a week later, my ex and I were walking to a movie theater and she was walking with some random guy. And she looked at me and said hi to my ex-husband and just kept moving on. And I remember like the anger and the rage that was going uh, that was like flowing inside of me because I was like, I had no clue what I did. It was like I was just blinded or blindsided by a friend just cutting me out of her life when I've always been there for her. I listened to her bitch and complain about everything. Um, and I, you know, helped her out with a lot of things. And she was my student in a yoga class. So that's how we met. And uh, yeah, it was really hurtful because I was like, oh my God, this like, four-year friendship, or at the time, I don't remember how long, maybe three years, I was like, it just kind of went down the shitter. I was like, what happened? And, you know, after some thoughts of reflection, I mean, in that moment, there was no sense of closure that I realized that abrupt change was like, she was headed down a completely different path than I was. I was doing Reiki and all these different things, like kind of living in, uh, you know, in the spiritual realm, like I wasn't a perfect human being. Um, but we were just headed down two completely different paths where it's like I was trying to better myself and she was just going down a, a, just a different road of a lot of, you know, like the pot, the consuming too much alcohol, the partying, um, kind of the lustful thing, like sleeping with a lot of men. And so in that sense, that friendship didn't really align with who I was anymore. And so I do feel these abrupt changes are God or the universe's way of taking things that no longer serve you out of your life. And so when you go through these hurt and painful experiences, the ego flares up. It's like, what did I do wrong as a friend? Or it's like, why didn't that person, you know, contact me and just tell me like my energy levels needed to be more peppy at six in the morning and stuff like that. So those things are, they're, they're frustrating and challenging because from a interpersonal relationship standpoint, especially in the work world, people don't know what they don't know. We all have blind spots. And so if somebody's work performance isn't happening, it's, um, it's like they, they just don't know. They, they need to know these things. And so, um, you know, because people aren't mind readers and sometimes it takes a tough conversation to bring some awareness being like, oh shoot, like I didn't even realize that like I don't smile as much early in the morning and things like that. So um, there is a mix of self accountability, but to some degree too, it's really scary, but on some deeper level, like your soul is making space for things that no, uh, uh, for things that serve you better, whether it's a job or a, an employer that's more in alignment of your soul's mission or, or things like that, or maybe it's like, all right, maybe you're done just working at these $15, $20 an hour jobs and your self-worth and value is increasing to where it's like space is being made for higher employment to help you out. So, um, yeah, abrupt changes are forms of spiritual ascensions. A lot of times you do see this with like 
endings of things like breakups or employment ending. Um, sometimes the wake up call or the spiritual ascension is through disease or through a tragic accident. Some people live life so egoically or so stuck in the material plane that it takes their ego to shed by getting in a car accident and then reflecting and realizing like, holy crap, like I shouldn't have road rage or I, you know, realize that these certain things are more important to my life because my life was almost just taken from this type of accident. Um, we see a lot of, in the holistic health communities, um, with a little bit of that I've studied or communicated with some holistic cancer treatment centers in Germany, is when somebody gets cancer, they believe that it's not a disease, but it's a dis-ease within the person. So not only are they looking at their nutrition and their mental state, but they're like, what is going on in your life at this point in time? Um, in addition to um, maybe they were living a life that was being wasted. You see this all the time with near-death experiences, and I'll link that um, video down below that I share more information on, on near-death experiences. But yeah, if you've gone through abrupt changes or various shifts in your field of work or in your relationships in general, um, just know that there is a logical and a spiritual reason for this. Some of it is to reflect on your own performance or on your own mistakes and doings. Those things happen. Um, but if something just, you know, you kind of get blindsided by something um, that really wasn't necessarily your blame or your fault, you can just start to look at things like, all right, where is my soul going? Like, was I really happy with this person or this job or this friendship? Um, sometimes we are content and we're fine in life, but the universe wants us to challenge ourselves more and presents us with other and different opportunities. There's nothing wrong with being content because contentment is, uh, it's very necessary in life because a lot of people aren't happy with what they have and they always want more and more and more. But sometimes, you know, if we're not really living up to what we're meant to do here on this earth, the universe is going to start pushing you and it's going to start to come through more abrupt changes. Your sole mission might just be to help people. Your sole mission might just be to be a mother or a father. Your sole mission might be um, here to become an influential writer, to help people, help with communication. You might just be here to be a builder or a thinker, a logical, rational person that's meant to work in business. You know, we all have our different... Um, needs and that's why I do believe in things like astrology because there's so much different energy that comes through the signs and the elements that it's like you know you need that practical earth plane type of mindset that comes from the earth signs of Taurus and Virgo um, and then you need the ethereal people like the air signs I'm an Aquarius so it's like we're all you know we're like little balloons like flying in the air we're, we're airheads so you do need those like far out progressive crazy scientific minds to kind of help push and shift society in a different way. So if, if you've had abrupt changes in your life, things that have blindsided you or the rug has been taken out from underneath you, just know that no matter how bad that experience hurts you on a soul or a heart level or that experience really flares up your ego, just realize you're not here to fulfill your ego, you're here to fulfill your spirit. So it's really hard, like, when you catch somebody lying to you, like, good fucking riddance, walk away from that relationship, it's not going to be easy, you're going to have to heal, you're probably going to cry a lot, um, but that person, you know, being sneaky and doing stuff behind your back, like, if you're a genuine, honest person, you want genuine, honest people in your life, like, your soul doesn't have time for that stuff, so embrace those changes. So those are some thoughts that I have on abrupt changes being kind of a, a spiritual ascension process in addition to kind of like a wake-up call in general on your own um, personality and character flaws. So there is a lot of self-reflection that can go on. Even, you know, with divorce, it's like my ex-husband was like, you did this, 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 this. And I was like, good God, like it really damaged me for a little bit on my self-worth. But I really reflected and I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe he's right. I did come across as cold and detached. Like that's kind of normal as an Aquarius with a Virgo moon. 
like two signs that can be very cold and detached. So it made me be really aware of that presentation that I can sometimes give to the public. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you'd like, you can subscribe to my channel. If you have any thoughts or comments on this, please post them below. You can see other videos and blog links that I've posted below as well. And I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time. So thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Bye.